Rick asked me to, uh, to come back today and talk a little bit about uh, leadership. And uh, when we started talking about the theme for the day, adversity, grit, overcoming challenges, the notion of the crucible of leadership, which is a theme I've been playing with lately, really came to mind. And um, giving away a little bit of the talk, the subtitle sort of says it all. So let's go right to it. What is work? Alain de Botton, who's a British philosopher, writes in Status Anxiety, although the fear of being left penniless is a primary reason for our worry over the instability of our employment, which a lot of people who have jobs do, it is not the only reason. We also worry because of love, for our work is the chief determinant of the amount of respect and care we will be granted. It is according to how we are able to answer the question of what we do. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Normally the first inquiry that we will have when we meet someone is that the quality of our reception is likely to be decided. Right? In Japan, depending on what you do, determines who bows lower. And in New York, only we don't bow. Work is difficulty and drama. A high stakes game in which our identity, our self esteem, and our ability to provide are mixed inside us in volatile and sometimes explosive ways. Work is where we can make us ourselves. Work is where we can break ourselves. Work is where we can make ourselves. Work is where we can break ourselves. Understanding this context is absolutely critical for understanding your own transformation into leadership, into leaders, and the transformation of your employees into leaders. If you have employees who are there for the job, be warned. On the other hand, if you have employees who are not there for a job, be warned. The stakes are sometimes explosive and difficult. The emotions run so high that not a day goes by that somebody's not crying in my office or crying on the phone to me. That's how tough this is. Let's talk about the crucible. Anybody know, not know what a crucible is? Good. This is one of my favorite writers. It's a man named Warren Bennis. And Bennis is one of the best writers of the 20th century on the question of leadership. Um, one of the things I love about what he said was uh, uh, he, he was really glad that he actually didn't have to lead at all. He could just sit back and observe. But he writes, and on becoming a leader, in the course of studying how geeks and geezers, he actually said this, become the leaders, I discovered that their leadership always emerged after some rite of passage, often a stressful one. We call the experience that produces leaders a crucible. The individual brings certain attributes into the crucible and merges with new and improved leadership skills. Whatever is thrown at them, leaders emerge from their crucible stronger and unbroken. The crucible is an essential element of the process of becoming a leader. So Rick, you were right on the money in pairing Angela and I, and Tom. The crucible is an essential element of the process of becoming a leader. Brad Feld writes, Entrepreneurship is hard. Most startup companies fail. Most startup companies fail. You know this. We sometimes deny it, right? When we run into the cocktail parties at the meetups. How are you doing? Great. Everything's great. Everything's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. 
Yeah, you laugh because you know. And then you call Jerry. Jerry! Right? Even those entrepreneurs who have achieved success often have stories of staggering personal challenges and failures. Who's got failures under their belt? Thank God, right? This is the entrepreneurship version of building grit. If you want the deliberate practice for building grit, fail often. We'll talk more about that in a moment. The boneyard of unsuccessful entrepreneur endeavors is very wide and very deep. It's a hard job. It's a hard job, takes its toll, and failure haunts you. Ken Robinson, whose um, TED Talk went viral, writing in Out of Our Minds, says, being in your element is tapping into your natural energy and your most authentic happen, to ha authentic self. When that happens, as Confucius once said, you never work again. Authenticity, becoming yourself, understanding who you are, the process of being a CEO. I'll tell you about a client. By the way, this is completely made up. <laughs> it's a composite. I have a client who's got two co-founders. She's always fighting with the two co-founders. And I'm thinking, what the heck is going on here? I get them both in. I talk to the both of them. I send, and I'm working, and I'm working, and I'm trying to figure out what is the fight about? Why are they so fighting? Is it because there's a power struggle? Do they not believe that this person should be the CEO? Does this sound familiar? There's a story? You know, this constant back and forth. Like, come on. And the company is succeeding. That's the irony here. Could be doing better, but the company is succeeding. They can't, it gets so bad, they can't stand to be in the same room with each other. And one night, I'm driving home. I get a phone call. I'm, on, I'm in the car, and I'm like, you know, what is it? What is going on? And I finally say to my client, okay, what are you doing to this person? And there's a long pause, and she says, well, I know I'm a pain in the ass because I have to be right all the time. I know it's wrong, but I can't stop myself. And finally, I realized it's my client's fault. Because <laughs> I've been giving her all this advice about how to work with the recalcitrant defensive. And the reason that the co-founder is defensive is because they're feeling criticized all the time. And there's this moment of self-awareness and self-recognition that clicks in. I almost like drove off the road. Because my client goes, in effect, it's me. I'm the one who's causing the problem. Anybody in the room willing to admit that they're the one who causes the problem sometimes? Yeah. My wife is very happy right now with me admitting that I'm a pain in the ass. As she points out to me, it actually doesn't matter if the dishes are washed before we go to bed. But! I then opened it up. And this was really the big moment. The next few weeks, what we worked on is, what does she really believe? What values does she hold? What kind of company does she want to build? And what kind of adult does she want to be? Because come on. this is an adolescent. And when we're stressed, we're going to regress. And generally speaking, we're going to regress to the most difficult moments in our life. And if you were 14 or 15 and your parents divorced, you're going to act like a 14 or 15-year-old. D.W. Winnicott, child psychologist, made this discovery in the 1950s. This is what we do. What kind of adult, what kind of CEO, what kind of leader do you want to be? I am not what has happened to me. I am what I choose to become. Buddhist story. Miller Rapper, our famous uh, saint, <clears throat> spent 20 years meditating in a cave. 
Can you imagine what he smelled like after that? And there's a famous story. Miller Rapper one day leaves the cave to go out to gather some food. He comes back into the cave. He discovers the cave is filled with demons. And demons in Buddhist cosmology mean our emotions, our challenges, our fears, our anger, all the things that actually hold us back. Okay? And he does what any right-thinking person does. He runs around the cave trying to chase them out of the cave. Get out, get out, get out, get out. And they multiply. So then he says, aha, that's not going to work. So then he sits down with them and he starts to teach them. He's going to teach them the Dharma. Ah, namaste. Wonderful. So, hey. And all the demons sit down quietly like little children in a kindergarten class. But nothing happens. No change really happens. Then he says to them, aha, what are you here to teach me? And boop, 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 one by one they start to disappear. Simple question. The reality of what is, what are you here to teach me? What am I supposed to learn from this process of what I'm going through? The loneliness and the pain. Ah. All but one disappear. And the one that remains is a big, hairy, ferocious, blood-curdling demon with fangs. <laughs> And he's scared. This is the real demon. Everything else is just bullshit. And he puts his head towards the mouth of the demon and he says, eat me if you wish. He goes right into it. Every wisdom tradition I've ever encountered it, ultimately demands the same thing. Every single one. Whether it's Judaism, Buddhism, Fred Wilsonism. Thank you, Ian. You've got to go inward. This is uncomfortable. Oh, God, this guy, Jerry, is making me talk about feelings and myself. And really, the problem is them. What did Pogo say? We have met the enemy end, and it is us. I'll amend that. We have met the savior, and it is us. You know who the best CEO in the room is? I do this as a trick. I take a mirror out. I don't know. I don't know how to make you a better CEO. I don't know how to make you a better CEO. I don't know how to make you a better CEO. You know. You know. Because you know your company. Your board doesn't know your company. Your employees don't know the company as well as you do. Your investors don't know the company. You know the company. You go inward. You be courageous. Trimpa Rinpoche, one of my Buddhist teachers, says, to know fear is to know fearlessness. Actually, I even have a better quote here. Warriorship. And he doesn't mean fighting, he means being a warrior, is based on overcoming cowardice and our sense of being wounded. The ground of warriorship, the thing in which we build our capacity, is fear itself. You want to become a fearless CEO warrior? Admit to being afraid. Put your head into the demon. What do you believe? What's true? What's not true? What values do you hold? What kind of company do you want to be? What kind of an adult do you want to be? Joseph Campbell, you must have a room or a certain hour or so a day where you don't know what was in the newspaper or on Twitter or on your Facebook stream or on your timeline or in your email inbox where you can simply experience being. Bring forth what you are and what you might be. Bill Gates has his quarterly off the grid weeks. I'm talking five minutes a day. Just back away from all the screens. Just pause. Remember the moment where you thought about 
the idea that was going to change the world that became your company? Do you remember that moment? It was right in the middle of doing a bunch of email, right? No, wait, it was on Twitter. When was it? It was in a quiet moment, wasn't it? When you connect with this, what the Chinese ed energy medicine teachers say is your second brain, not only do you connect with who you truly are, you connect with the source of your own creativity. You want to pivot? Pivot from here. Don't pivot from here. This can be our own worst enemy. I'm going to figure it out. 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 Wait a minute. I know what the answer is. Thank you.